130. Wait for the Lord, like those who hope in God's mercy. God's steadfast love endures forever. Watch for God like those who eagerly await the morning. We watch for God whose power redeems us. Hear God's hopeful word, hopeful word like those who long for pardon. Sing praise to God and rejoice in God's love. Morning, everyone. Bow in prayer with me, please. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for being here today to worship you at First Baptist to get help. Pour out your spirit on us today as we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for installing Pastor Chris. I think it was two or three weeks ago now. And we just ask for a special blessing on the church and his ministry. Lord, we remember those that are sick and shut in. Be with them. Those that are watching online. Pray that you would, would touch us all today. And uh, we remember Pastor Chris, who's visiting his mom and his family. Lord, give him a good rest up time so we can come back and serve you strong so join me now as we say the lord's prayer our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and give us the treads as we forgive our debtors and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Okay, please sing with me on our offertory prayer, our offertory hymn, Lord be glorified. Please stand and join me in singing hymn number 79, To God Be the Glory. We'll be singing verses 1 and 2. Okay. 
perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender, who truly believes that freedom from Jesus sermon title is Continuing in God's Word. You already know that. <laughs> but I want to share my own story first, how I came to see the importance of it, and then talk about Thomas and, uh, and, and John at 20, 30, and 31. So, they call him Doubting Thomas. We'll, we'll decide whether he was a doubter or not, okay? But anyway, the scripture reading, starting in verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, who was called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were, were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Place your finger here and see my hands and take your hand and put it in my side and do not continue in disbelief, but be a believer. Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So then many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, and that by believing you may have life in his name. God had a blessing in the reading of his word. Amen. I met uh, Jesus uh, received Christ. You know, I went to church like everybody, but I think I made a, a com serious commitment. Not, not like everybody, but I made a serious commitment when I went in the Air Force. It's something about you know, facing the reality that anybody else here in the military, you know what I'm talking about? But, you know, I had to go to possibly get my friends that got killed in Vietnam. You remember this, you know? So anyway, uh, I was in Biloxi, Mississippi. This would have been April of 1969. There for training in tech school. And uh, I went to a Billy Graham type crusade <coughs> and navigators used to help with the follow-up uh, for Billy Graham organization and so after I made that commitment that one night uh, three days later 
it's, it's two guys, a uh, list of guys with, with navigators. I didn't know who navigators were, you know. I mean, uh, turns out they were an organization that started out working specifically with soldiers in the military. Anybody know about navigators, heard of them? Yeah, they got some of those hands. Yeah, okay. So, um, they work primarily with military, but then they spread out, you know. And they put focus on, uh, you know, helping people be growing their faith, you know. So one of the important things that they talked to us about was the, the importance of the word of God in your life, you know. And they, they had an illustration. They call it the hand illustration. And I have seen this before, the hand illustration. And each one of the fingers represents a way you can get the word in your life. Hear the word, pinky, hear the word, ring finger, read the word, study the word, memorize the word, meditate, hear, read, study, memorize, meditate. And, 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 you know, they would grab the Bible, you know, and get a good grip on it. If you want to, they would preach that. They said, you want a good grip on the Bible, you got to do all five of these. Not just here, you know. But uh, anyway. Uh, so I've, you know, scriptures that stood out to me, like John 8, 31. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples. You know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Man shall not live by bread alone. You've heard all these before, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, you know, I worked in campus ministry. You know, that's how I started out after I got out of the service. Anyway, uh, so I. I would tell them, don't snorkel in the word scuba dive, you know. <laughs> you know, snorkeling, I don't swim at all. So for me to use swimming analogies, that's, you know, anyway. But uh, the, the snorkeler just goes along the surface and has a short straw, you know, so they can breathe the air, get fresh air. But the scuba diver, man. Old Testament in one tank, New Testament in the other, you know. I tell them, inhale the word, exhale sin, right? <clears throat> you know, anyway, we got to have a little fun with them. But, uh, yeah. So, I got interested in this, the, the study of the word. That's the that, that middle finger, studying the word, really they got my attention. Some of my friends really got into scripture memory. It, I mean, some of them would memorize whole books of the Bible. I mean, like Philemon, I, I, that'd be good with, you know, one, with all those chapters. But anyway, uh, so the summer of 1974, I got married in 74. And that summer after I got married, I went to summer school at Wheaton College. And I took a class from the Bible study professor, or, or the New Testament professor named Merrill C. Tenney. And Merrill C. Tenney was Billy Graham's teacher at Wheaton, you know? And so this was a really special privilege for me. And, and, and in fact, I took the class and I got credit for it on my transcript because I was an English major. And so studying the Bible, that's a book too, right? So anyway, I got the got credit for it, put it on my transcript. Uh, and so this class was called Bible Study Methods, Merrill C. Tenney. And it, boy, it was, he would, he would give us, we had a, a test every day on the lesson. And we had to take out an index card, four by six, size card, he says, time for your four by six. You got to take out your index card and he'll give you the question. You got to write it out, turn it in. Don't. But anyway, uh, 
Oh, I tell you, he, he told stories about his own study of the Bible. Listen to this. He would take butcher paper. You remember the old butcher wrapped it up, paper, butcher paper? After after everyone go to bed at night, in, in the, he lived in an apartment building with a long hallway. Can you imagine this, you know, in the city? And he had the butcher block paper, and he would unroll it all the way out. And he did what he what they call a grammatical layout in Greek. It's like diagramming sentences. And he wrote it out. He'd get on his, his knees and he would write. And he'd come back and write, do it some more. And he went, what? I thought, man, that's some serious, you know? So I asked him during one break, you know, what, 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 where did he get his training on and he said the one that influenced him was w.w w. white and so i found a book by w.w w. white this is 1895 an old book fits in your jacket i don't have a jacket on today fits right in that pocket and this is an inductive bible study was popularized by this 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 guy here w.w w. white and W.W. W. White, I, I found this out, and I want to mention it today because of the American Baptist connection to this. W.W. Uh, w. White would go to summer school at Morgan Park Theological Seminary, which is these. This is the same one Dr. Peterson knew. Millie Myron, you know, and she came out of Morgan Park Baptist Church. But anyway, uh, William Rainey Harper was the the teacher. This William Rainey Harper was a special guy. He uh, got his Ph.D. from Yale at the age of 18 years old. It's some serious stuff here. I mean, that's impressive, isn't it? It was a black girl they just announced. Got hers from Arizona State at 17. This was two weeks ago. So, I'm, you know, homeschooling <laughs> may be better, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, so William Randy Harper was American Baptist. It was called Northern Baptist Convention back then, over against Southern Baptist Convention. And he put an emphasis on the relationship of one text to another, one verse to another, one word to another, and, and taught them how to see uh, comparison, contrast, climax, see these relationships in the text. And he wrote inductive Greek, inductive Latin, inductive Hebrew. Uh, so that inductive Bible study, learning how to start with the words and the text and, and to make observations. Observation, interpret it. What, what is it? What do you see? How do you, what does it mean? What are you going to do? You know? Anyway, uh, I have a handout I wanted you to see. Um, does the ushers have that handout we can pass out? There you go. Yeah, let's look. look. Have they got it already? Oh, it's... Everybody got one? John, you got one? John didn't get one. Yeah, I wanted you to see that because that came out of this book. Uh, and it shows at the heart, right at the, better stay by the microphone. The heart of the scripture, heart of the Bible, he put John 20, 31. 
which is our text today. And I thought that was really good because you got the, the Old Testament, New Testament, all of those books of the Bible are in relation. And so the, the, the key verse 31, these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God and I believe that you might have life in his name. He says, no, all of these things are written. And I just thought, uh, man, that's how to think about the Bible. It's not just this, the book of John is written for you to believe. All of the Bible is written for that. So that's a good picture uh, to show you. So Thomas was called Didymus. The word Didymus means twin. So, uh, you know, maybe he had a twin brother or sister. Uh but the twin, <clears throat> two-ness can be a problem. It can be a problem because you can have, you can waver, you can go back and forth. She loves me, she loves me not, you know? You can go back and forth. James 1, 6 to 8. But he must ask in faith without it, any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind for the for that person ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the lord being a double-minded man unstable in all his ways twin anybody here born may 21 to june 21 anybody got any may got one Okay, I ask that because in the Zodiac, that is Gemini. Gemini is the twin. My wife was Shirley Pass in October 21. My wife was born June the 4th. But she wasn't double-minded about Jesus, I'll tell you that. <laughs> single-minded, thank God for that woman. She was single-minded and focused on the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have seen the Lord, they said to him, unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. He put a double negative there. Now I want you to see a, 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 a painting. Uh, this is uh, on the screen now. Look at this one. And it shows Thomas, this is done in 1602. Car, let me try to say it right. Caravaggio, Italian name. And it's called the incredulity of St. Thomas. To put that finger, now, uh, uh, incredulity, I looked it up. <laughs> incredulity the state of being unwilling or unable to believe something it's a perfect synonym for doubt okay now the truth is jesus said blessed are those who have he said you have seen me and you have believed, but I don't, we don't know for sure that he touched him. Now, this artist made it look like this, that he did. But anyway, this is, the, I think, where the origin of doubting Thomas came from. Doubting Thomas. But Thomas wasn't the, the, uh, you can take it, take it down. Th Th Thomas wasn't the only one who doubted. In Matthew 11, I'm sorry, Matthew 14. Peter was walking on water, remember? And he started to fall. And Jesus says, oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Yeah. And in Matthew, the other one is Matthew 28, 17. This is the resurrected Jesus is getting at the end. He's going to give this great commission. And it says, 
when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. Now, this is after they all had seen Jesus and it, you know, for a while, but some were doubtful. So, doubt, I think, is probably going to come our way. But that doesn't mean we have to fixate on it, you know. We got to learn from Peter. Place 27. Place your finger here and see my hands and take your hand and put it in my side. Right? And do not continue in disbelief, but be a believer. Right? I don't think Thomas put his hand in Jesus' side. I think when he saw it, that was good. Do not continue in disbelief. That's a perfect imperative. Don't do that. Right away, stop. But continue to be a believer. I have a hobby. Uh, my, my hobby is collecting vinyl records. So I've, I've got I got a lot of old don't don't give away your records right I got my record player I got I got a jukebox man you know it's cool in my family room you know and I got a rig where I can just hit them because you're supposed to put nickels in it but it, it would cost you a quarter four quarters to play a record now you know <laughs> not a terrible thing. Remember, baby roots were a nickel. What? I mean, got to pay two dollars. Oh, come on, man. So anyway, I got a, a buzzer, like you ring a doorbell, zzz, and then that makes it play. That's all right, is it? You know. Anyway, so look, look. This is a, a I collect sixties and seventies, and I got a few fifties somewhere. But anyway, uh, this one's seventy-seven, and it just came in the mail. I order it. I get them on eBay, you know. Anyway, this one is Rocky Robbins, and the hit side is You and Me. Now, you don't know that song. Either. But anyway, I brought this because Rocky Robbins was a one hit wonder. See, and I think that's what he's telling us in this text don't be a one faith wonder, keep believing. Don't just believe one time. Believe, believe, keep believing. You know, this but this is a good song though, Rocky Robbins, you know. Yeah, but he's a one hit wonder. You know some one hit wonders? You got some out there. Some good songs. But they didn't make any more. So <clears throat> incredulous Thomas conceived of Jesus in a way that no one else ever did. He was extremely doubtful, but he was extremely insightful. Isn't that something? And so he's the one. Only Thomas had this incarnational insight. My Lord and my God. So I got, you know, I, I use the computer on for Bible so you can you can you can type my Lord and my God see if anybody else said it. nobody thought of that but Thomas that's that to me that is so cool that you, you know I mean don't don't just think this person is is lost out or something they can have some some unbelievable insights yeah so Thomas, after, went out to India, did you know? India. And there are people, Christians today who are, go back to those churches in India that got started from Thomas's evangelism years ago. Yeah. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's a message for us. You know, we have not seen Jesus, but 
we can believe, even though we have not seen, right? He hasn't appeared to us. So in 2030 and 31, many signs, many miracles were done, were performed, <clears throat> but they're not written in the, in the, in, uh, in, in, in the Gospel of John. See, the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, were written first. And they tell similar stories. That's what's called synoptics. And John wrote his in 90 AD, last. And he wrote special, he picked out those things that are not written in there, in the other three. There were a few that uh, stories that he told, feeding the 5,000, see what I'm saying, crucifixion, but the uh, the woman at the well, John, uh, telling about Thomas, these are things that are unique that he pulled out later. But he couldn't include all of them, you know. And here's that key verse again. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life. Believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Some are still waiting for a Messiah to come, but he's, God has sent him already. And believe is plural in number. It's not singular, plural two or more so believe and believing has the same uh, root the same idea do it it's, it's two or more so when when you when a person is a believer it's it's an ongoing continuing and so the word faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god as 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 our faith grows as we stay and continue in the Word. Reading, hear, read, study, memorize, meditate. And finally, Zoe. Zoe is the word for life. It's life as God lives it. It's abundant life. Eternal life. Well, I'm glad I got to share today. Thank you for the privilege of... Uh, and invited again to come and speak to you. Amen. Can you please stand and join me in singing number 106, The Greatest Thing? Oh, 
benediction. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Go and serve the Lord. In Jesus name. Amen.